What's going on guys, Alec here from Oz Fury Gaming. So today we're going to be taking a look at 2.6.2, 3.0 .2, 3 and 3.0 professions. Now, we've got a lot to get through, so stick with me as we go through this 20 minute roughly bit. Uh, so to start us off with, we had 2.6.2 .2 overview. So, the patch release is still 20 minutes in March, we've done an update for the March 17th. Showing here that um, the PTU guys have been on this time only a few days, compared to like the 7 days roughly they had. Uh, showing here also all the bug fixes they've got, and the things that they have fixed, and the things that are still to come. Now, don't get too worried, guys, if you want 3.0 or whatever, you're going, oh, you know, we want this 3.0. Now, 2.6.2 is an important patch. Without it, we are going to really struggle to uh, have 3.0 get off the ground because of a little thing called serial variable codes, basically. So, serial variable codes allow the game to pretty much take up less bandwidth for all the data coming through because it's basically organized instead of just coming in and going, okay, where does this all go? Um, improves desync, so if you've ever played with heaps of people on the server, you'll notice that it's impossible to kill people. So, moving on from there, we had uh, some ship updates. So, first of all, at a jump point, they had the Anvil Hurricane, shown here the design brief and all the stuff coming along with that, as well as some really cool stuff with uh, some concept photos showing what the ship could have looked like, and then they just wanted to show them some final tech photos with the uh, cockpit and where the pilot were getting up into it. From there, guys, they decided to show us uh, the modules for you know, your fuel tanks and where everything's going to be sitting as well as an epic front view and then decided to show us where the uh, gun will be getting in and underneath the ship and everything to go with that. Also this is what the cockpit will look like sitting in there, how the display will come up, so very standard anvil sort of business. From there they had the uh, RSI uh, Aurora, some you know, final finish photos, this was just for the subscribers den. So some really nice photos showing here guys, the top quality artwork being put into this ship. Being a beginner ship I can see why too, you know, just want to try and make it look really good for the game. So with all this wrapping up, we didn't just have some good photos, we had uh, a little sneak peek into some ships at the end of Around the Verse this week. So let's check out what they've got here, starting off with the Razor. So this is going to be a little banger, just a little flying ship that we're going to be able to get into and do a bit of racing with. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any guns on it, I haven't actually seen that. I think there might be a size one mounts, but I haven't seen anything. The Hull C. This is uh, actually really cool to see, guys. I nearly bought one of these things, but I ended up going with the Gemini because I want that uh, bulk armored cargo hull, not just a uh, just cargo hanging off my ass. So, but the ship's huge. Like you can see the size of it, and you can uh, also see the animation. So you see how much it uh, expands and contracts. So that's really cool to see. Moving on from there, guys, we have a uh, Javelin class destroyer. So this is going to be the biggest ship that you can own by a single person in game. I don't like working on uh, you know, my fees or hypes, I like working on what this is going to be, so that's what we've that's what we read so far. Not be here too guys, we've seen this ship uh, in 3.0 build where they've had it in the sand dune, but it's actually really cool to see all actually get up and work in all the different diagnostic stations. And then this cargo hole, you can see the missiles and the cargo, so if you do see one of these things, it would be worth going in there to see what military tech they hold. And of course we have the b-ball corp, because b-ball is life, hey. So, there's just heaps of tech here guys, you can see they've got the corridors, you can see that it's uh, really well built, Is you know, like, and I'm not just meaning, you know, the ship's well built, but just the colours and the things I've clicked, they haven't skimped on actually designing this ship, this is our gravity generator, as you can see in the lighting too and everything, they've, they've really taken, the artists and the design team have really taken their time to get this ship right and get it built properly, so that looks like to be a gunner's station, Moving on to the recreational area where we have a bit of air hockey, so when you're getting a shit shot out of you and the stress is too much, you can come down and play a bit of air hockey. Uh, a launch pad for a Vanguard Warden, or I suppose any of the Vanguard range. Moving on from there, we have the uh, Aegis Reclaimer. So this is going to be your salvage ship. So salvage isn't coming until 3.2, but it's good to see that it's um, getting there, guys. It's getting built, it's getting finished off, looking very polished. It wouldn't surprise me if it does get dropped to 3.1, sort of as a just a ship you can fly around. I don't see if uh, it'll be truly usable, but it would be cool to have in game just because it's cool to have more ships in game makes the universe more interesting. Uh, let us know in the comments if you guys have bought one of these and why you bought it. You know, if you're going to be actually doing salvage or if you've got any real plans for it or if you just bought it because it looks absolutely wicked. And then here we go here with the Epic um, Planet Shot. Moving inside here we have the uh, interior. <laughs> Very much a just concept design, or not concept, but like, you know, build. If you compare it to a, a MISC ship or a a Drake ship, you can see that it's still industrial like, but it's very clean, the colours are very nice, you can see that it's, Aegis is definitely sort of that next level above in, in their production size, that they have the time to be able to build these things properly. Mystic do as well, 
but they feel a bit more dirtier. And then Drake is on the next level below where they sort of the El Cheapo entry level for your uh, commercial slash industrial ships. So I, I know they do the Cutlass as well, but that's meant to be sort of more of a actual transport ship than just a um, pirate ship. So just heaps of uh, shots here, guys, showing off the ship. If you're getting bored of it, just skip forward another minute if you want. But I just find the stuff really good to see because you get no idea of what the ship's going to be like, the feel of the ship, what's going to be in it, what to expect from it. Um, one thing that I do find interesting about the Reclaimer, though, is all these little hidey holes and hatches. Like, how easy would they be to get to? But we really can only find that out when we actually get hands-on with it. Speaking about hands-on too, guys, probably want to make into a little note point there that this ship's going to be big and pretty unprotected once you uh, start salvaging, so you probably want an escort of some sort. Speaking about escort, a Bengal carrier probably do a pretty good job, eh? So let's see that in game soon, hopefully. Next on the list was they had the Constellation showing off the engine work and we're showing it moving around, as well as the uh, damage state and emergency lighting for the ship, shown there just in the cargo bay. Next as well, they were showing the um, engine being blown off there, and they talked to about how they've still been working on the ballistic guns and things. Next on the list is I'd like to point out that space station. So obviously. We're going to be talking about that after this little stint, but I um, just want to show the quantum here, showing that they quantum across, and then they've got two jumps. But their space stations are becoming pretty pretty close to being done, I imagine. Obviously, we need it for 3.0 and so on, but it's good to see that they're getting a lot of stuff finished off. Uh, also, two I want to talk about is one that does a second jump here, guys. They get to a um, asteroid slash debris field with a ICC probe, but one, oh, and also the moon, but... Either moon or planet, can't tell. But um, when he does the second jump, you guys notice that he actually goes to what's called Red Dwarf. Now, I'm sure they're not referencing the great British comedy sh uh, TV show, but I'll be curious to see what it's going to look like because you can't actually quite see it from here. So how far of a jump is it to get there? And if it actually is a Red Dwarf star or what's going on with that? Next on the list, as it's talking about, was Space Station. So here they are showing off a Space Station, and it'll change in a second, showing the modularity of a Space Station and how it's just got seamless uh, com uh, construction. I talked to about how each space station is going to be the same, you know, it can have, two space stations can have the same build, but because of where they are, they'll be built differently. So if you're in a mining place, it's going to be dirty and sort of really industrial looking and really sort of, you know, not clean at all. And then you get, uh, say, something like the Arc Corp or in a, you know, a capital city, and a space station above that will be looking very clean. Or, you know, if you're in a really rich area uh, or in a high profile area, you've got a lot of um, VIPs, the space station is going to be very clean, it's going to be very well art designed, it's going to be very well uh, up kept in the regards of the stools as well, and all that sort of thing, so that's going to be cool to see. Uh, from there, they've shown off just the grey box items, so here is just a simple room, you think, but it's actually for the toilets design, so here they've shown off the modularity of a toilet. Now, this is just a display or a parable if you would of show of what the space stations are going to be like so instead of showing an entire space station they've got the toilet block and showing that this is what one toilet's going to look like and this is what another toilet will look like so this would not just be happening for toilets but for entire space stations so from there guys they were showing off the concept build for a pipeline of how they build space stations so here they've got one with all the different ideas and the different work coming into it showing how they want the lighting to work for it showing on what the different parts of the space station to be for it and all that sort of cool stuff which is really cool to see to show that they're yeah, even though it's going to be modular, they still want to have a sort of really well-built space station. So it's not going to be like a No Man's Sky where they go, ah, oh, this is still do. We'll just put this randomised thing over here and then we'll do that. And, yeah, we're not going to really go into coding and making it really technical. Okay, yes, maybe I'm hating on No Man's Sky a bit because he did really sort of upset me because I was hoping for something a bit more. There's a lot of lies in it. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about a great game of Star Citizen, guys, because this game is going to bring forth a really good set of... Uh, Universal uh, immersion, right? So as you can see here from the other side of the space station, that you know they're taking into account everything, and they did talk about too how they had the sealouts for you know your space station. So when you rock up, how are you going to be able to see the space station? How's it going to feel for it? How's it going to yeah? Is it going to actually really fit in the place that it's um, living? You know, what sort of uh, what's its main purpose of the space station? You know, is it a cargo hub? Is it a security port? What's going on with it? So there's a lot of different things they took into account too when it came to building these space stations, guys. So here they are showing a um, module build, so just plopping on rooms next to each other, plop, 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 plop. It's all grey blocks, I know, but it's just cool to see that they can just throw rooms in there, you know, and this little rooms too, like, you know, it's where the spaces, they could put space between spaces. 
as, as well as reference we quoted from some movie that I can't remember. So it's just cool to see that they've got all this tech coming into it to make this game really well built and really feeling big. And to get into real modular stuff, they're showing here how the game has a library of real modular builds, so corners of walls, floors, boxes, windows, ramps, staircases, all that sort of thing, poles. So that was really cool to see all that come together. And it was really cool to see that they um, also too have actual buildings, like I showed before the modular, but they're showing here the actual buildings, what they're going to look like. So you can see they've got a security checkpoint. They've got the staircase here for like a little corridor. Uh, they've got all sorts of cool stuff going on. Uh, shown here to another security point and all that sort of business so I imagine there's going to be actual security points in game so you know unless you've got high clearance you can't go to certain parts of the space station which would be really cool really immersive sort of thing so yeah so moving on from there guys they were showing off to uh, what the truck stops are going to be like on planet showing how the different modulation will come in just building off it's cool to see they're going to have legs just building into it also to I noticed that the Render of the planet's not exactly the best, but I'm curious to know why that is and if how high up in the atmosphere it is too. Next on the list was uh, the actual space station that we saw in concept before, showing here what the final build's going to look like. And then they went on to show us that this is what it's going to look like in-game, just as a grey box version. So you can see the scope and the size of the space station. With the uh, Gemini sitting there, we've got a couple of Avengers series ships there, Freelancer there next to it after them. So it's going to be interesting to see how big the space station will be. Uh, they talked about how they wanted to make the space stations, you know, fully full of rooms and stuff, but I don't really take that into account until I see it. And so here, guys, are showing off the modular modularity of the truck stops again, showing off the um, more than just the rooms, but also to the extra little tidbits that are going on top, like your aerials and your fuel canisters and stuff. So moving on from there, they were showing off the planetary work with uh, the different, well dirt mapping of the station so as you can see here it gets dirtier and dirtier so obviously if you're in a really clean area you know it's, it's a just outside a city or whatever where it gets a lot of traffic it'll be clean and well upkept but if it's in a mining base it'll be fairly dirty so what they're showing here too guys is how they can adjust the dirt mapping so it's not just you know okay we apply uv skin no they actually adjust it up and down to get that dirt layer right and the game applies it so that was shown off the tech there for the um actual excellent work that the tech designs have been put into it. So speaking about tech guys, we were talking here about the uh, good old shop front. So here we are with the um, display of what it's going to be looking like and how we're going to, be able to interact with it and what it's going to do for us as well as we've got the Casper version here but it's got ship parts, not clothes so look past that one for the moment. Uh, next on the list two guys is they were showing off the um, uh, first person of picking up stuff. Yeah, really good description now. Basically they're showing here what it's going to be like to interact with the environment, how it's going to be able to go around and just grab things and do things with it and how your character is going to interact with all those items and it's not just med pens and guns and you know other little small handheld items guys but it's going to be two of when you're in your ship such as this uh um hornet here you can actually touch things and look at things and adjust things with your uh hand movements from there guys too we're showing off the tech design now so here they've got uh your mission building so they're showing here the the, the flow of a mission you know, or, or a mission branch. So as you can see here, they've got one mission which comes down and it has all these different components and different variables and then they come in and they can create multiple missions off that one mission and it's going to open up side missions. So expect to have side missions upon side missions. From there, they were showing off to the uh, universe building tools. So they're showing here how they can just plop objects into game. So you can see they've got Port Olisar and Crusader. So you know, out on that side, they could be doing anything with that um, item. So it's on a, it could be really interesting to see how it goes there. Next on the list too was they're showing off the um, sound and how when you place sound and it actually sounds properly, like you know it comes from its proper direction. Also too with sound they had lighting, so they're showing off the old lighting reflection, how it looks a bit washed out, a bit too reflective versus the new, how it looks more realistic with the uh, items around it. Also too they're showing off the old light diffuse, how it was a bit dull and made the colours look really washed out. Now they've got the light diffuse where it's going to be coloured properly and shaded properly. Speaking about shaders guys, they were showing off the uh, single old light. Showing off how the old shaders were working on the character, now they've got the new single light. So they've been able to improve performance for how this better lighting tech by uh, actually ch working on the shaders and the rigging of the sh uh, shaders on characters. From there too, they're showing off first person stuff. So here they're from a walking animation to a running animation, making it so much smoother instead of this little jittery business because it's quite a, quite a bit of a schizophrenic looking thing when you see them running around. So as we can see here guys, we have the AI animation walking around, showing that how it's going to be able to walk around in tight spaces and hopefully not get caught on things. 
And also too, they were showing off the uh, reload animation for this beautiful gun here and the amazing scenery that comes along with it. Showing off the first person stuff's really coming along. Showing here too, a female and a male stance. Showing what's going with the same guns, showing how that's going to be coming into play. Showing here too, the different guns, that you like the way you hold it and the way it looks. Getting bigger and bigger until we hit the rail gun, which will be a ship busting gun. Showing here too, the uh, animation for prone and crouch and standing, how you, the animations work between the two. Showing here too, the... Uh, Animation work for what I imagine would be a cutscene for Squadron 42 with Mark Hamill there, so that's awesome to see. Showing you a reload section of a gun with uh, other pistol concept art and other guns coming into game, which would be awesome to have. As well as the Dragonfly here, guys, seeing it flying around. And we have seen this in-game, but it's good to see a final build coming into it for 3.0. And here also too, not to forget, is the Ursa Rover. So both of these are going to be excellent to have. Let us know what you think would be better for uh, planetary exploration, guys. Now after this guys, we had 10 for the chairman this week, which brings us on to 3.0 professions. So 3.0 is going to be bringing across cargo and mining. Now, mining was meant to be for 3.1, so what they actually bring across to 3.0 is going to be interesting. Now the reason why they're bringing mining in too, was they said, is a lot of the stuff that's in 3.1 with the mining is going to really apply to 3.0 with cargo. So they meshed the two together. And the one thing I wanted to talk about too was the uh, prospector, if you'd better actually do ship-based mining. So they said they're planning for it, but I'm not a big fan of maybes and planning for it and you know we might do it or we'll hope to be in there and i'm a big fan of confirmation so until i see it in game where they said yes it's going to be there i'm not too worried about it i wouldn't be putting it on my list of things to be worried about guys but 3.0 is going to be bringing across a whole array of different jobs and different things to do with it so they wanted to talk about how 3.0 will allow cargo hauling so it's not going to be just you know oh he's you know, i've got to get a freelancer or something to cut move cargo no you can actually go work for someone so if someone's got say a gemini right or a you know, a, or a, a caterpillar and you want to go move cargo you can go work for them and they can pay you you can agree on a on a fee or you can hire npcs to come work your ship if you've got a you know a gemini and you want a good pilot so you can you know be looking after the ship fixing it as an engineer but also you know so if you they can do the autopiloting stuff and then oh shit okay we're actually being hit here all right i'm going to come in i'm going to take control and actually pilot this big rig um so it's going to be a lot to come along with that now, as long as, as well as with mining, guys, I talked about how um, there's only going to be basic resources for mining. I've talked about this in a previous video. So don't expect to be finding, you know, uranium and all this really special dark matter and all this other cool stuff. Now, they're going to be just having, like, you know, hydrogen, iron, copper, uh, gold, that sort of thing. Your basic elements that you need for tech builds. So we've been talking about this sort of stuff here, guys, and I said about 3.0 and 3.1 before. So let's actually take a quick recap of what the different builds are planning to bring along from the production schedule. So as we can see here, 3.0 is about the stand system. We're going to talk about this. It's going to be cargo and that sort of bullshit. So there's heaps of information on that, guys. Go look at that. This is just a recap. Uh, 3.1 is meant to be bringing mining along. Now, if mining has been 3.0, I'm curious to see what 3.1 is going to bring out. If it's going to be like a second half of like, you know, mining or what's going to go on with that. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. They got 3.2, which is going to be repair and salvage, so that's where our reclaimer is going to be coming in for that. So that's going to be really cool to have fun doing that sort of thing. Those two, we don't get the um, crucible till later on. 3.3 uh, is farming and rescue, so that's going to be cool. I'm going to be definitely farming heaps of stuff because that's going to be good money in that, I reckon. Um, and then just from there, as we can see, we got 4.0 below, which is being jump points for you know, other systems. But that's when we get the crucible, guys. So I'm curious to see if they will bring the crucible for 3.3 for that repair because that'd be interesting to have. But look, we'll see how it goes. So I just want to say thanks for uh, watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This is just a rough recap, like I've said a couple of times. So I hope you uh, got something out of it. Leave a like and a comment if you got something to say or if you just enjoyed the video. Let us know what I, what you think I can do better with these videos. And um, I'll try and answer any questions you have for me. So I hope to catch you guys in the verse. And I'll see you later. Toodaloo.